welcome back to another yoga video for you. Um, for those of you that haven't watched my videos before, I'm Kat Methan, hi. Um, and I'm a yoga teacher and today I am going to, so today I'm just going to free flow and then I'm going to talk you through it on a voiceover because I'm not quite sure what I'm feeling today. So I'm just going to probably work through some sun salutations. Obviously, it might be a little bit more fast-paced to my other videos, um, which might make it a bit more of an intermediate standard, just because of the nature of the way that I flow for my breath work. Um, but hopefully, you can join along with me. And yeah, I hope that you love it. Hopefully, hopefully, I'll love it as well. Who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, let's get going. So coming down to your mat now into a wide leg child's pose position, just take the arms out in front, uh, the knees go wide and the forehead just melts down onto the mat. Take a little wriggle round just to begin with to find your centre and then just really breathe into this position, feeling the inhales and exhales working through the spine and the back of the body. Breathing in and breathing out. From here, start to walk the hands over to the right hand side. So you're really stretching through the left side Breathe into that left side, really feel the breath nourish the side of the body. Breathing here and then walking back through center and take those hands over to the left. So this time we're stretching through the right side of the body. And then coming back to center and then just coming up onto the elbows now. And working through some cat and some cow poses here. So inhaling, lifting the chest, exhaling, curling the spine, but staying down on our elbows. Inhaling, lift the chest, lift the head. And exhale, curl the spine, really round that spine. And then coming down to a sphinx position. So chest up, everything nice and open lifting through the chest on those elbows and then placing the hands down and lifting up, inhaling up to a high cobra and exhaling back down. Inhaling, lifting up, exhaling slowly, snaking the body all the way down. Inhale up again, exhale, take it down. And then just wriggle out that bottom, loosening through the lower spine. And then take the bottom back into an extended puppy pose. So option of coming up onto the fingertips to get deeper into the stretch and the bottom flies really high up into the sky. Breathing here. And then possibly option of taking the legs away behind you, tucking under the toes and straightening through the legs. Now be careful in this posture. Only do this if you have the mobility in the spine. And then breathing, lifting up and just curling that spine in an all fours position. And coming back into that extended puppy, taking the twist, thread the needle with the left arm underneath and right arm goes up to the sky. Option of taking the palms together and finding prayer pose and maybe, just maybe, <laughs> lifting that right foot off the floor. So it's a really a question of just finding the balance here, having a bit of fun and playing around with the posture, seeing what you can do, placing the right knee down, come back with the arms out in front, and then thread the right arm underneath the left, place the side of the head on the mat, Reach that left arm up to the sky and then breathe here. Again, the option of taking palms to heart center and using that pressure to twist the chest around. Again, the option of playing around. Just take that left foot out and just practice taking a toe off the mat and just seeing if you can work with that balance. It's really, really good for just understanding the body. Just seeing how the body moves. Coming back to neutral, just coming into a narrow leg child's pose. 
and then coming up to kneeling. Just curling out through that spine, exhaling here. And then placing the hands down, tuck under the toes and take the bottom back into our first downward facing dog. Option of pedaling out through the feet here, maybe shaking the head for no, nodding the head for yes, give me more yoga. <laughs> maybe just coming up onto the toes and taking it back down. Inhale the right leg high and open out through the hip. Option of bending that top knee here in our three leg dog. Breathing into this opening. Straightening that right leg, bring it back down to the mat. And then sweep the left leg high. Option again of bending that top knee, really opening out through the hips here. Gazing underneath the left arm and just breathe. Take that left leg high again and bring it down to downward facing dog. And then wave the body all the way over to high plank and set your high plank. So it mainly means wriggling the feet back a little bit. And then we'll just step all the way up to a forward fold, holding opposite elbows and just let the body hang down, moving side to side finding stillness, finding the center in the body. And then when you're ready, rolling the body all the way up to standing, head and neck come last. And then just set the foundations here of your Tadasana. So now we're gonna work through our sun salutations to energize the body and to really help warm ourselves up. To begin with, let's just stand here, take the hands to the belly and just breathe. Just feel the belly rise and fall. Inhale and exhale, closing off the eyes. And then take the hands down by the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up to the sky. Exhale, palms come to the mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, step or jump back. Inhale, lift upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing here. Inhale. And exhale, really grounding down through the foundation, spreading through the fingers. Staying soft in the ribs here. Taking any little movements you might need. On the next inhale, let's step or jump the feet to the hands, lifting the chest halfway, exhale over. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky and exhale down through heart center, arms to the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale down to a forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog and breathe. Now this is an intermediate flow, so if this is going too quick for you, just take your time and work through these sun salutations in your own time. You can pause me and you can come back to me at any time, breathing here. Listening to your body, being kind to your body. On the next inhale, jump forward, lifting the chest halfway. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, down through heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, palms to the mat. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, step or jump back. Coming down through Chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog, exhaling downward facing dog. Again, breathing here, inhaling and exhaling. Always having the option of bending through the knees and really working on lengthening that spine. On the next inhale, Let's step or jump those feet towards the hands, lifting the chest halfway. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky and exhale them down to the side. 
Sun salutation B. Inhale, coming to Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, lift upward facing dog. Exhale, finding downward facing dog. Inhale, Virabhadrasana A. Exhale. Staying here, one extra breath. Exhale, take those hands down. Come down through Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, over downward facing dog. Inhale, sweep the arms up, Virabhadrasana A, warrior one. Extra breath, and then placing the hands down, step back, Chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, and breathe. So really finding the fluidity in your sun salutations, but working with your breath. Our breath lengths are all different. We all choose to move at different paces. So just doing what feels good, inhaling and exhaling being the most important thing. Inhale, jump the feet to the hands, lift the chest halfway. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, hands down by the sides. And again, inhale, Utkatasana, take that hinge. Exhale, place the hands down. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, step or jump those feet back, lowering down through Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, Virabhadrasana A. Frame the foot, step back, Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward this time, warrior one. Exhale, frame the foot, step it back, high plank, chaturanga, inhale, lift the chest, upward facing dog. Exhale, come back to find a settled position in your downward facing dog. Breathing here, always the option of taking a bend in the knees, really grounding through the hands. And on the next inhale, Let's step or jump the feet to the hands when you're ready, lifting the chest halfway, exhaling forward fold over those legs, inhale, sweep the arms up, hinge at the hips, Utkatasana, exhale, hands down through heart center, last time, Utkatasana, exhale, palms to the mat, inhale, prepare, exhale, step or jump back, lower down, Chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog, inhale, right side, warrior one, exhale, Step it back, high plank, lower down, chaturanga, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog, step it forward, inhale, left foot, warrior one, place the hands down, high plank, chaturanga, inhale, lift the chest, exhale, downward facing dog, really, really nice guys, breathing here, option of taking a bit of a twist here in your downward facing dog, so taking the right hand to the outside of the left foot. Breathing into the twist, the option of just staying where you are in a downward facing dog. If you took the twist, this time taking it to the other side, so left hand goes to the outside of the right foot. Just breathing here into the twist, staying strong through the arms. And then unravel and step or jump the feet back to the hands, forward fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, take it high, exhale down through heart center and breathe. And if like me, you're a bit hot, you might want to de-layer. <laughs> take some layers off and possibly even do the hair. <laughs> As you can see, mid-flow and everything needs to change. So take some moments just to breathe here into Dasana. Find your center. And then come back to find that Utkatasana, so that hinge in the hips, that softness in the shoulders and in the ribs, really drawing up through the lower belly, gazing to the toes, checking that you can see them, checking that you're taking that hinge and that seat deep enough. And then bring the part, the hands to the heart, to chest, and lower the chest down even more. So really send that bottom out. And then we'll take a twist. So taking the left elbow over the right knee. Option of keeping the palms together or opening out through the hands and just using that pressure to help with the twist. 
Breathing here, coming back through center, unraveling the twist and going to the second side. So taking that right elbow over the left knee, gazing to the ceiling and always the option of taking those arms out wide or just staying where it feels good for you. And unraveling, coming back to center, breathing here. Taking the feet hip width apart, interlace the hands behind the back and fold forward, letting those arms fall all the way over the top. Option of pedaling out through the knees here, taking each shoulder to the knee. And breathe. And release those hands. Slowly peel the body up bone by bone, come to standing and bring the feet together. Okay, sweeping the arms up and on inhale. Let's exhale down into a forward fold. Inhale, lift the chest and then exhale, jump it back to high plank and stay here and just roll it back downward facing dog. So we're gonna snake the body, wave the body forward to a high plank and then back again to downward facing dog. Just working through the two of these postures, inhale coming forwards, exhale taking it back. And again, inhale it coming forwards, high plank, exhale, take it back, downward facing dog. And again, one more time, taking it back. Now, sweeping that right leg all the way up to the sky again, opening through the hip. And then bringing it all the way down through the body. So coming into a low lunge with the right leg forward, take the arms high up in the sky and just open out through the chest and sink down into the hips. Breathing here and then releasing the hands down, place the left hand next to the foot and then open that right arm up to the sky, coming into a twist with the back knee off the mat. Inhale and exhale and then place both hands down, sweep that right leg high again and come to find the same little sequence on the other side. So sweep that left leg high, three leg dog with the left leg up and then bring it down through into a low lunge, take the arms high and melt down into the hips and lift the chest. Exhaling, place the right arm down next to the left foot. Sweep that left arm up into the sky, finding that twist with the back knee off the mat. Breathing here. Inhale and exhale, place both hands down. Take that left leg high again in downward facing dog and then placing it down in just downward facing dog and breathing here. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, step forward with the right foot, come to find warrior one. So pivoting that left foot out slightly and then exhale, coming to find warrior two. And now let's just flow through reverse warrior and pars vokanasana. So using these two postures, just inhaling and exhaling, just working through the two of them with the breath. Staying lifted in the chest and then finding yourself back in Parsvakanasana, placing that right hand down on the mat if you wish and then the option of staying here or taking the bind. So taking the right arm behind the back, binding it underneath the right leg. Again, always options, stepping forward and coming to find bird of paradise. So you just step forwards and try and find some balance here, lifting the chest up, possibly even straightening the leg, possibly doing none of this. If the side stretch alone is enough for you, then that is perfect. Stay where suits you or have a little play around. It doesn't harm to try and fall as long as you're being safe and listening to the body. Those of you in Birds of Paradise, bring yourself back down, everybody meeting in Parsvakanasana, and then framing the back foot, step it back, high plank, exhaling Chaturanga, and taking a downward facing dog, breathing here. 
coming down onto the elbows and then just walking those feet in a little bit and doing some tricep press ups. So just pressing with the elbows. You might wanna do one elbow at a time. Just doing whatever feels good. Again, options here. So these are this is a drill that's good for pincher myrasana. If you have pincher myrasana in your practice, then by all means take that forearm stand and enjoy it and breathe into it. If you don't, just staying in dolphin and breathing into dolphin. Everybody now breathing into dolphin together. And then coming back to find that downward facing dog, breathing here. This time stepping forward with the left foot, coming to find that warrior one, lifting the chest and then exhaling it, opening to warrior two. And so we're doing exactly the same as what we did on the other side, flowing between reverse warrior and Parsvakanasana. So just working on opening through both sides of the body and breathing, finding the flow and the fluidity between two postures and how beautiful that can actually feel for the body. When you're ready, everyone meeting in Parsvakanasana, placing that left hand on the mat if you wish and taking the bind as a next progression. So the right arm comes over the top of the body and comes behind you. Again, option of finding that bird of paradise, walking in and then lifting ever so slowly that left leg up to the sky, breathing here. Staying nice and calm and controlled, lifting up through Mula Banda and Uddiyana Banda. For those of you still in Parsvakanasana, just working into the breath, finding some peace in the posture. Those of you in Bird of Paradise, placing the left hand down, step back with the right and we'll all meet here together. And then let's frame that left foot, step it back, high plank, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Same as what we did before, let's come down to the elbows and let's all find dolphin together. So again, options here of either going up into pinch of myrasana if you have it in your practice, or staying in dolphin and just taking one leg up at a time. Coming up onto the tiptoes maybe, just working with where we feel the weight through the shoulders, through the forearms, feeling where there might be a stretch in the hamstrings. And let's all just breathe into this dolphin posture now. And when you're ready, coming back to find a downward facing dog. And then rolling the body over to that high plank again. Back to downward facing dog. All the way over, using that little snaking technique that we already did. And then let's jump the feet to the hands and exhale into a forward fold. Again, interlacing those hands behind the back if you want and working out, pedaling through the knees, bringing the shoulder to each knee as you do it. Or just hang down there in a forward fold and sway gently, whatever feels good for you right now. And then when you're ready, peeling the body slowly up to standing. And then let's shake everything out. Shake the feet, shake the hands, give it a little wiggle. Shake the bottom, maybe do a little shimmy. I do this in my practice so often, guys. This really just loosens everything out and it gives a, like a bit of a playful feeling. And no one's watching. I mean, obviously you guys are watching me, but no one's watching you. So just do as you feel. Okay, let's get back into it. Inhale, Utkatasana. Take those arms up and then let's use those hips. Get a bit sassy in the hips. So circle them going one way and then circle them going the other. And you really have to work into the core to do that. And then exhale, open out cactus arms. Inhale back to Utkatasana. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, Utkatasana. One more time. Exhale, cactus arms. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhaling, palms to the mat. Inhaling, stepping it back with the left foot. So we've got our right foot in front coming into a low lunge, taking those hands interlaced on the top of the right knee and just really melt down into the hips. 
sinking down, finding a bit of an opening, finding the stretch, breathing here, inhaling and exhaling into the hips. And then take the bottom back into half split and then lowering that chest down ever so slightly. So think of lowering the tummy down to the thigh rather than the head down to the, to the shin. Trying to keep the spine long, working through the hamstring. And then come forward again. Very much just an option here of picking up that back foot and taking a bit of a back bend, seeing if you can take hold of that, that toe with the right hand. Just an option, as always. And then releasing here, option of coming down into a full split, or you could have blocks either side of you to work through this, or you could just flow back and forth between the low lunge and the half split. It's a really, really good way of warming up the hips and the hamstrings for splits. So whichever option you go for, just breathing here into the postures. Inhaling and exhaling. And then when you're ready, let's all come out together and coming to find downward facing dog, everybody together, breathing here. Maybe give those hips a little wiggle while you're here in downward facing dog. Again, getting all sassy. This is obviously my vibe for today. <laughs> And then same again on the left side. So step that left foot forward, come down to find that low lunge, interlacing the hands on top of the knee, or if you wish, having blocks either side of you to give you a bit of an arm extension so you can more comfortably get into the lunge. I just want us to work on melting down and really breathing into the postures, inhaling and exhaling taking the bottom back and finding that half split. So really working through the left side hamstring. The foot flexed up towards you, just breathing here. Inhale and exhale. Again, same options apply, coming forward, option of picking up that back foot, maybe finding that back foot with the left hand and coming into a little bit of a back bend. If that doesn't feel good for you, or you're not willing to go that far, you don't fancy going that far today, then let's just keep it into a nice low lunge, really working through the hips. I always stress this so much in all of my flows, but it's so important to do what feels good for you. And now, while I've gone down into a full split, here you can use many options like you did on the first side. So possibly having blocks either side of you to help you slowly get down into a split or just staying in that lunge and working and flowing between the lunge and the half split. Whatever you do, just breathing into it. Inhaling and exhaling placing the hands down and let's all very, very slowly wiggle our way out and find ourselves back in downward facing dog together. And when we're ready, jumping the feet wide. So coming into a yogic squat, jump the feet towards the hands and then take the bottom down. Option of bringing those hands into a powerful mudra or just bringing the palms together at heart center and using the elbows to push open the knees and try to keep that spine nice and long. Option of staying here, which is amazing, or taking those hands underneath and behind the legs. And as you can see here, I just sat back. So my legs are just sitting on the tops of my elbows, on, my, on the top of my arms. And then I've just taken the feet off the mat, finding that balance. Or we can just stay in that yogic squat and really nicely work through the posture. Everybody coming back to the squat together. For those of you that went into the arm balance, let's just take those hands, give it a little wrist, a little bit of wrist therapy. Just wiggle them round a bit. Place the hands down on their back and then lift the chest and breathe. Placing the hands down now, just jump or hop the feet back to a downward facing dog. And then we're gonna work through a few bunny hops. So just, this is just fun. Just do what you can. Just 
bunny hop your way to wherever you need to go on your mat, just taking a few little jumps, maybe a few little tries of handstand. If you want to keep that going for a bit longer, by all means, just pause me and we can just, you can just keep on trying. Just maybe now, once you've done some bunny hops, maybe kicking up to handstand, trying that and just seeing what works for you. If you're a bit scared, possibly taking it to the wall, just doing whatever feels right. And then when we're ready, let's just come into Padahastasana. So just taking the hands underneath the feet and breathe here. Maybe just rock back and forth a bit to massage out through the wrists and through the hands. And then slowly when you're ready, peeling the body all the way up to standing and just shake off the body again. Maybe twisting, maybe shaking, maybe shimmying, just do whatever feels good. Breathing here. Any movements that the body feels like it might need. And then let's step towards the top of the mat. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale down to heart center. Inhale the arms up again. Exhale down through heart center. One more time, inhale, arms up. And then exhale, come to a forward fold, lift the chest halfway. Exhale, jumping back, lowering down chaturanga, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, coming back to find downward facing dog. And let's step the right foot on the outside of the right hand and come down to find lizard. So this is an even deeper, as you can tell, really working through our hips today. Coming down, if you can, onto the forearms. Maybe taking the right hand to the right knee and just opening it out even more. Breathing here. Just a couple more breaths here before we switch to the other side. When you're ready, placing both elbows down on the mat. Maybe coming up onto the hands, stepping back into a high plank to switch over the legs. And then as you bring that left leg now to the outside of the left hand, maybe wanting to sink down onto the elbows, onto the forearms to really get re deeply into the stretch. Breathing here, option of placing the left hand on top of the left knee and pressing that left knee away from you, just opening out as well as deepening the stretch. And then when you're ready, let's step back to high plank and roll the body back to downward facing dog before we walk the hands into a forward fold. And from here in our forward fold, option of staying in a forward fold or just practice with the hands rooted down onto the mat, coming up onto the toes and rocking the body forward over the wrist. So you really get a feel for how much weight goes into the wrists and the hands when you're in handstand. If you can really send that weight forwards. Just trying one more time. Coming up onto those toes, maybe even bending a knee. And then falling back into that forward fold. Bending through the knees, swaying the body, holding opposite elbows, just release here and relax. Breathing here. And then walk those hands out again. Coming back to find that little handstand practice that we were doing. So obviously before we just worked through bunny hops and we just worked through some kick ups. Maybe now take yourself to the wall or just kick up a little bit fast, harder and try and find that balance, catch that balance in handstand. Just one or two goes here. And then when you're done, coming to find Padahastasana again. So just taking the hands underneath the feet giving those wrists a little bit of a massage. And then finally, you're all like, yes, <laughs> coming to sit down on the mat. So Janu Shishasana, let's take the right leg out and the sole of the left foot to the thigh, and then inhale the arms up and exhale into a forward fold. Breathing here. Staying with that breath, feeling the stretch through the right leg, 
Just keeping the body nice and long and lengthened, the spine straight. And then when you're ready, inhaling and coming to sit up. And then let's switch over the legs. So left leg goes out long, right knee comes in. So the right sole of the foot is against the left thigh. And then inhale, lift the arms and exhale, fold over that left leg, finding that nice long stretch again. Using the thought of the spine staying long is the most important thing here. So you can have the knee bent as long as our spine is being looked after. When you're ready, inhale, lifting up. And then bring the legs together for Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, knees drop out wide. Option of padding under the knees with some pillows if you wish. And then just walking the arms forwards and coming into a forward fold. Breathing here, feeling the back. Rise and fall with each breath. Feel prana around the body, the energy flowing. We've worked hard today. So just making sure that all of these seated postures are there for our body to get a little bit, bit of R&R. &R. <laughs> so from here, from Baddha Konasana, coming up onto the toes, so let's try and get onto the balls of the feet, try and get the heels together and the knees go out wide. So it's quite a tough balance. So if you can, oh, but even I'm falling over. <laughs> so if you can, placing the backs of the hands on the knees, option of coming to chin mudra with the index finger and the thumb joined. And just try and use the core to stabilize you. It's a really, really great balance to work on. Breathing here. And then let's place those hands down, step the feet back and come into one of my favorite ever postures, frog. So working into frog pose. And just stay here and just take some time here. Hopefully you might love it as much as I do. It's one of those that's really tough, but it's kind of a love to hate. So just let the body melt down into the mat. Let the hips open and really send the breath to the groin and into the hips. Send the breath to where you feel the stretch. Breathing here. Inhaling and exhaling. Few more breaths here. Having the eyes closed is a really great way of looking inwards when we're in postures like this. When we're in a challenging posture, we sometimes look to the outside world to take our mind off the stretch. But I want you to really feel this. Breathe it all in. It'll be over soon, I promise. <laughs> One more really deep breath, inhaling and exhaling. And then let's bring ourselves back to a narrow leg child's pose. In your own time, moving really, really slowly out of frog position, bringing those knees together and just curling everything up together. And breathe and smile to yourself. <laughs> Yoga is fun. It doesn't have to be hard work. <laughs> Breathing here. And so now coming into our finishing little sequence, I want you to bring the legs around and lie down on the back. So take the back, the spine, all the way down slowly. And then draw those knees in, feet about hip width apart and just window wipe the knees side to side. So loosening out through the lower back. 
and then come to find stillness, tuck the knees into the chest and then take those knees out wide. So bring the knees towards the armpits into happy baby. You can either take hold of the outside of the feet or you can hold the two, your two piece fingers around the big toe, whichever feels more comfortable for you. And then you have the option of moving side to side in happy baby or just staying still. Just whatever you do, working with the breath. Option of bringing the soles of the feet together to get a slightly different stretch here, but still drawing those feet towards the belly. And then when you're ready, let's come to find shoulder stand. So rocking up and the legs go high. The most important thing while we're in shoulder stand is to keep the neck and the head straight on. When the neck is compressed like this, the last thing we want to be doing is moving our head side to side because it can be really dangerous. So staying nice and straight, feet head up high. Close off the eyes or you can gaze to the feet or to the belly. Sometimes I really like to watch my belly rise and fall. It's a really nice, calming, kind of meditative um, sort of feeling, just watching the belly rise and then watching it fall. Holding shoulder stand for a few more breaths. And then slowly lowering the legs down to over the head, to coming to find plow pose, halasana. So taking the uh, tops of the feet onto the mat. Interlace the hands behind you and send them long down onto the mat. So we're all stretched out, working through the spine here. One of my, another one of my favorite postures really enjoy this it really helps work the stretches of the spine and then you've got the option of staying in halasana plow pose or you could come into karnapindasana ear pressure pose whereby we take the knees down by the sides of the ears and we just give a little bit of a squeeze a little bit of pressure to the ears keeping the arms and the hands where they are and just breathe And then slowly when you're ready, rolling out of Karnapindasana or shoulder stand or wherever you were and coming to find Matsyasana fish pose. So I've got the soles of my feet together and my knees dropped outwards. This was more for a space situation. You can take the legs out long in front of you if you've got room. Lift up the chest, send it high and drop the head back. So you can see we're opening out through the throat here. So we're counterbalancing the postures that we've just done where the chin has been tucked into the chest. Breathing here. And then when you're ready, take any final movements that your body might need before coming into relaxation. Sometimes I find a little happy baby or a little rock backwards and forwards, whichever feels good for you, whatever your body is crying out for. And then once you've done those movements, come to find Shavasana. It's what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Breathing here. So I will leave you in your Shavasana to just rest and relax and to feel the energy flow in the breath. Thank you so much for doing this flow with me. I know it's maybe been slightly harder and faster paced than my normal flows, I wanted to bring the more intermediate and advanced people something as well as just the beginners. So I hope you loved it. There will be many more and I'll be back with some beginner flows too for you guys that couldn't get involved necessarily in this one. Anyway, sending much love. Stay there in your Shavasana and just breathe it out. Goodbye. Namaste.